Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode 7 of this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode on NHL 20. Today, guys, we are going to jump into the 2022 playoffs slash entry draft. Uh, obviously, the Tigers did not perform again, uh, but the Mark Ham Lions did. So they are going to be going up against the Toronto Marlies first round. And we're going to see how it goes because they are very prone to first round eliminations. So first three games of the series, they win game one, win game two, and lose game three in overtime. one nothing. Oh, that hurts. But they do win game four. Okay, so that's a good start to the episode. Um, much better than what normally happens here. So uh, yeah, no, that that's good for the Lions. Normally they wouldn't make it past the first round, but uh, yeah, no, round one down, and uh, let's see if they can defeat the Laval Rockets here second round. That will be an interesting challenge for sure. Okay, so first three games, win game one, lose game two, lose game three, win game four. Okay, nice. Can they win game five? No, they cannot. Ouch. Two one loss. And they face elimination now against Laval. Are they going to get knocked out? We will find out. And they do not. They push a game seven here. By the looks of it, the Eagles and the Manitoba Moose are through. As well as the Province Bruins. Ah, and they get knocked out in seven by the Laval Rockets. I believe Laval knocked us out last round too. Or last year too. But yeah, when Sean Pengo is your best defenseman and best player on the team, there's going to be a bit of a problem. So... I think my bet's going to go on the Colorado Avalanche here to win the cup, but honestly, it's hard to tell. As far as the AHL goes, I would bet on the Manitoba Moose to win this season, but you honestly don't know. We get a new contract offer. It's for five years. Um, I don't even really want to consider other options. Like We're staying with Hamilton. That's just how things are going to go. And the Capitals win the Cup, and the Laval Rockets win the Calder. Okay, definitely different than last season, for sure. I think that's Ovi's second Cup. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. So, here comes the long-awaited draft lottery and oh oh that's not great we had three picks there and none of them pan out we moved down from four to five down from six to seven and then stay at nine with florida's pick ouch ouch okay so that means well there's a franchise player here in esteban slaney I think we want to pursue him still, but that's going to be a fairly heavy price to pay. An exchange. Yikes. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted to see, but, you know, it happens. And that sucks, but we got to work through it here. Crap. Dang it. Okay. So Jason Spezza retires. So does Ryan Kessler. Did Jumbo Joe stay? I guess he did. Okay, so Joe Thornton stays, but uh, Jason Spetz is the highest point scorer there. And then in goal, only two guys retire. Okay. So, we're coming up to the draft here right away. Paul Stastny becomes a coach. Boychuk becomes a scout. And a whole bunch of players are coaches retire there yikes and you guys know my opinions on draft interviews i'm not gonna do them and then slater cuckoo we can keep but those other guys we need to trade um yikes oh man we have not had a lot of growth here in this team that's not great 
Okay, uh, maybe we throw, like, I don't even know who else. Miles Wood on there, maybe, but, yeah, yikes. Okay, so heading into this draft, we are looking to trade up with the Islanders to land Esteban Slaney. That would be very nice. He has grown an inch, so he is 5'10 now, so that's big. That helps uh, for what we're looking for, but... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure who else we're going to draft here. Probably one of these two guys, uh, even though we have no scouting reports on them. Um, we need defense. That's it. Just straight up. Okay, guys. So... Moving into the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, the Tigers are looking to land this first overall pick. We are going to throw in Alex Petrangelo into this deal, see if that will go through. I mean, we can try it, and it's rejected. Okay, so let's try... Um, I feel like the ninth is too much. What if we try like a first rounder from Edmonton next year? Still too far off, dang. What about Yikes, um Miles Wood, maybe? And then in exchange, give us like Benino. Would that go through? Too far off. Yeesh. Um, okay, let's try. Yikes. Like that, maybe? We could try that. Rejected. Okay, what about just that? Oh, come on. How has that not gone through? Okay, we're going to try the ninth. Plus, like... Mm, I don't know. Ninth plus like a second rounder next year. Okay, so we have to trade a first rounder apparently. That's stupid, but it is a franchise player here that we are going after, so. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so we still have the first, fifth, and seventh picks in the draft. Um, yeah. Okay, so, obviously we're going to take Slaney here, Esteban Slaney. Hey, 80 overall, that's not great. Um, would have definitely liked the high rated player there. Oh, it's sweet lines, the same rating. Yikes, okay. Um, Shane Wright goes third overall to the Rangers. Dembski, oh, that's a bad pick. Yikes, that's really not a good pick. I almost feel bad for them, but I really don't. So we're going to take Topi Coloma here. And yeah, 78 rated elite. Nice. Uh, obviously, Matt Savoy goes sixth overall to the Sabres. And this is where I'm going to go off the board. I want to take a defenseman instead. See. Mm. I want to try to be as exact as possible with my picks. And I really don't know how good Lars Dahl is going to be. I mean, he looks okay. But I really don't know. I kind of want to take this Silvestri guy instead. Uh, let's take Dahl. Oh, <laughs> that's a bad pick. Okay. So St. Louis wants to trade their pick. 
And let's see. I don't want to trade any of those guys. What about? Mm. Would Sprung work? Eh, yeah, yeah, let's try Sprung. Nice, okay, so that goes through easily. Sim to pick 12, and... I missed out on a couple guys here, but... At the same time, I'm fairly happy with what we're picking up here, because... We're getting more defense, which is a big thing for this team right now. Nice, 71 rated. So yeah, Sylvester was definitely a good investment there through the draft. Now we also him to pick 36 and see what else did we miss on. 73 rated McCallum. Yikes. Besides that... Oh, Morozov, come on. Calgary, I can't stand that when they do that. Really? Okay, well, we got another defenseman here, but I wanted that low elite. That's annoying, man. That's just straight up annoying. Wow. Go away. I guess we can take this defenseman here. Craig Pitt. Probably end up being like a top six defender. Oh, okay. 65 rated. That's not too bad. Not awesome, but not too bad. And then this other pick here. Ooh, Kaminsky. 71 rated. Dang. Oh, and Vishnevsky. 67 rated. Really? Okay. Um. Do we risk a goalie here? Possible, or we could wait for Nesterov because I think we'll have a shot at him. Um, you know what? I'm gonna risk it. Sadikov, nice elite, 60 rated too. Dang, that's actually a really good pick. I mean, he's only 5'11, but dang, that's a good pick. Did we miss anything else in round two? Because I think we got the majority of the good players there looks like it yeah nice okay and then this round nothing really there so let's just keep going uh, for those of you guys who are wondering why i'm way quiet on this section of the recording it's because this is being recorded later at night so you know a lot of people are sleeping near me and i'm just trying not to wake them up really so we could take montador or we could risk Nesterov. How big is he? He's six feet. What about, like... kind of want to take this guy instead. Peter uh, Sorokins. Yeah, I'm going to take him just to guarantee a top six playmaker. Hey, only 54 rated, though. And... What else did we miss? Of course, Nesterov's an elite. Of course he is. You win some, you lose some, I guess. That's pretty bad, though. Yeah, wow. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. That guy could be a low elite, possibly. I doubt it, but it's possible. Oh, no, we're taking Ganey. No question. Yeah, oh, 64 rated playmaker too. Nice. Who did we miss? Nobody. Nice. Okay, um, we could take Korolak here. I don't know if he's going to be elite, but there's a possibility. Or we could take, ooh, Ragnarsson, maybe. I don't know why I have this guy pinned, Arthur Hannon. No idea. I think I'm going to go... Ooh. Wait, when's our next pick? 132. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of feeling Ragnarsson because he's 6'4". 
Nice 52 rated low elite. That's actually solid. That was really good. But who did we miss in taking Ragnarsson? 52 rated low elite. Oh, 55 rated Zimmerman. 49 rated Coral Luck. Okay. Yeah. Not great. Not terrible. Just in between. Um. I think uh, I kind of want to take Coral Luck here instead. Because I know he. Wait, three year ETA. Possibly I'm taking him. No question. 60 rated. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. No, he was not good. Low top six. I was expecting a low top four. Oh, Hannon would have been way better. Why didn't I take him? Okay. Whatever. Some work out, a lot more don't. Oh no, Enroth. Enroth would have been the guy to take there. Oops. Yikes. Okay. Um. So I think we're going to go way down to Enroth here. We're going to take him at 180, you know, even though he's pick 140. Whatever. Land some half decent prospects through here. Oh, yeah, no, we missed Hannon. Anybody else? Um. Nope. Doesn't look like it. it. Looks like some pretty bad picks here in these last rounds. I don't know who else to take here. Risk another goalie, maybe? I think we'll try it. Fringe starter, not great. 48 rated, too. That's pretty bad, actually. Honestly, not terrible for what else is available there. <laughs> Yikes. Um... Screw it, I'm going to take a risk on Tyson Allen. Hey, low top six, that's actually pretty solid. Nice. And... That actually has to be one of the best picks of that round. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no way. Anybody's topping that in round six. Round six is pretty weak normally. So, yeah. Besides that, yeah, I don't think Magnuson's really going to turn out. So. I have no idea who to pick. Let's go with, um, let's try Barch, screw it. Right-handed D, he's a seventh defenseman, ouch, okay. So that's going to wrap up the draft, I'm not really doing too much more on this, and, uh, yeah, I mean, those last couple picks were pretty bad, but overall, not awful for a draft i guess you could say like we did all right um sylvester pit all three defensemen there and then we get a franchise player in esteban slaney and then a elite winger in uh, topi coloma so yeah definitely could have been worse
All right, so as you can see there, Troy Terry and Tyler Parsons both need contract. Uh, they're, they're RFAs. They need new contracts. And, well, Matsumoto's on his last year, so he's going to want some money moving into this next year. Um, I think we go two years at $6 million for Dadunov. Besides that, Jumbo Joe does not want to re-sign. That's fine. We'll just replace him. If he doesn't want a signature, or doesn't want to give us a signature. Uh, Vetrano is done. There's a couple players here. When you hear me say they're done, it means they've played a full three seasons in our system. And that they aren't drafted by us. So, yeah. We're just going to be releasing certain players like that. Other guys still have contracts left. Miles Wood is another guy who's done. Ethan Bear, we can offer a deal to. Two years, Martin Furk's done. Uh, these two guys, or no, not these two guys, just one guy there. And Mark Stahl is done. And yes, we had to release him, but, you know, that's just how it works sometimes. Uh, getting a whole bunch of contracts done here. Yakolev is also done. Simons is done. Falk is done. Trop is done. There's a lot of guys here that are just finished in our system. Like, there's nowhere else for them to go, really. Silvestri, we're going to try and re-sign. He's probably going to go back to Flint by the looks of it. Redmond's done as well. Um... Pitt, we're going to try and sign. Yeah, I don't know where he's playing there. Winnick, we will sign. Ganey, we'll sign. Just get all these guys done. Sergeyev, even, yes, because we did just release a bunch of defensemen. Same with Dahl, if he will play in our team. Yes, please. Uh, Korolak, he's 20 already. Yikes. That's not great. Then besides that, I think we let everyone else just sit and develop for a year or two. As far as goalies go, Parsons needs a new deal. That was not enough money, man, but whatever. Uh, Caro is done. Jan Bednar we will sign. And Sadikov I'm going to let grow for at least a year, maybe even two. So yeah, our franchise is looking a little sad right now. We got fifty million in cap space. That's insane. We can definitely add some pieces here, and we don't get our head coach for the AHL. Crap. Same with our associate coach. That's not good. The assistant coach and the goalie coach both sign. Okay. Okay, so we get Larson, Dadanov, Bear, Slaney, Silvestri, Parsons, Winnick, Ganey, Dahl, Bednar, Sergeyev, Korluk, Pitt, Kilhoma. Everybody signed there, I believe. So we're just going to sim to free agency now. And, well, we will need to get a new coach or two soon-ish. So really just some last kind of stragglers here for all those scouts that we had to go and sign. And then we should be good to go here for free agency. Yes, we do need to hire coaches. So here's my method to the madness. We're going to go over to head coaches. We're going to just spam out a bunch of offers. Not even going to look at them. But, you know, one of them's got to sign. So, yeah, if we put out like four five offers one guy should sign hopefully i don't really care who just as long as somebody signs and then for associate coaches same thing just offer like five deals hopefully land one coach and honestly if one out of five doesn't convert then that's pretty bad And 
yeah, hopefully one of those coaches will sign. As far as the trade block goes, looks good. Looks like we got rid of pretty much everybody we were trying to. Um, let me just, you know, double check through the system here. Make sure I haven't missed anybody who's supposed to be out by now. Paul Byron has played three years, so we will try to trade him. Besides that, um, looks like I was pretty thorough on, you know, moving everyone who was not, uh, or who was here for three seasons. And as far as free agents go, who do we got? Goudreau, Klingberg, oh man, those are some big free agents. Whew. Yes, please. Ah, uh, there's some centers there. Giordano, even. Latang, Pareko. What about goalies? Oh, we got Thatcher Demko in there. And he's an uh, UFA. Yes, please. Okay, so we have options when it comes to free agency here. Nice. That's not usually a common thing. <laughs> usually free agency is pretty terrible <laughs> all right so guys we want to move there's really just one right where is he there okay who wants byron buffalo you want to trade me a oh i don't know oh darlene hit a franchise defenseman dang dang darlene See, that's what high elites should be able to do, is go to a franchise potential eventually. That's crazy. Can we get a fifth rounder back for... Nice. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so free agency, man. This is where we're going to try to get everything done. So obviously, Goudreau, you want to go out and get just to add winger depth, and apparently he fits forward line one. Besides that, John Klingberg, what about right wingers? Because there really don't seem to be that many winger options. Niederreiter. Craig Smith is an 84 overall, but he's 32 years old. Um, Maybe we just sign like a center? And play him like Zibanejad is not. He can play top six forward, but he's not exactly a true out and out kind of winger. So. I think we offer Goudreau a four year, $10 million deal. That should be good. I don't think anybody else is going to top that. With Klingberg, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to offer 9.5. So that's 19 million. We still have 45 million. Holy crap, okay. Okay, so we still have 25 million, more or less. We're going to go three years, 5.5 million for Thatcher Demko. And hopefully he can perform up to that elite rating there. We will see, because usually that doesn't happen. Um, what's the rest of our team looking like here? So, at this point... We got Duchesne and Leopold, Terry Slaney, Steves... Okay, so centers are looking good. We could probably throw one guy over onto the wing. Maybe two. Uh, honestly, these wingers are looking okay. If we sign Goudreau, then they're looking really good. Uh, those wingers are not looking good, so we need more right wingers if possible. And the defense is very much lacking. So Cuckoo and like... Man, we need like three more defensemen still. And goalies, yeah, we need some work. 
Yikes. Okay, three defensemen for, what, 20 million? That's doable. That averages out to, what? Three defensemen times... Okay, well, we offered Klingberg a deal. So we need at least two more. And I'm kind of thinking, like... Giordano and, like... Pareko, maybe? I think that might work. Okay, so Gio wants... We'll give him two years, seven million. That's fair. And then Pareko wants more money. So we're gonna offer him four million for or six million for four years, and see if that goes through. And then after that, we need a right winger. We could go out and get Guryanov. That's not smart though. As he's already played two seasons with this team. Yeah, not a smart decision there. We'd only be able to get him for one year. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking need a writer instead here. Four years, five million. That should be a fair deal. And then we can trade him on that last year. All right, um, all right, so we get an AHL head coach, Boucher, there, and then we do get an associate coach there in Peter Mikus as well, nice, and all right, yeah, no, we don't have the budget to sign you. And are we going to get a player here? Come on. Nino, Nino Niederreiter we do get. So he's coming to Hamilton. Nice. Besides that, anybody? We got Klingberg. We get Giordano. We get Goudreau. We get Preko. We get Temko. Nice. Okay. That's looking better. And Goudreau had a 72 point season, nice. Did I not sign or offer anybody else a deal? I guess not, but we are contenders now. I'm sitting there just spamming through like, isn't there one more player, isn't there one more? No, there isn't. <laughs> um, but, ooh, Leopold jumps up to an 87, nice. And honestly, this team's in fairly decent shape right now. I would say so, especially with those young guys having the potential to grow. So, centers, yeah, obviously we're good. Wingers, I mean, that left wing looks good. Like, it looks really good. Um, yeah, the left wing's good for a long time. The right wing definitely needs some more work. Uh, in the system, it's all right, for sure. But yeah, I think we'll be okay. And then defense, four, five, six. Honestly, defense is much better than it was just a little while ago. So, and same with goaltending. Yeah, no, this team's in way better shape now. Way better shape. So that is going to wrap up the off season. We are going to head to the next season now and see how this team is shaping up. Okay, so heading into the next season, we have sold 79% of our tickets. Nice. That doesn't normally happen. Okay, guys. So as far as the team is going to look for this season, this is major or the majority of how it's gonna stay. Uh, Lafreniere, Leopold, and Goudreau first line. It's plus one chemistry. Dadanov, Duchesne, and Tatar. Nice second line for sure. Uh, looking for some growth in the third line here and hopefully some chemistry boosts here with Slaney and Steves as they play together along with the Nonita Rider. And, uh, you know, he can score. These other two guys can pass. So that's kind of what we're looking for there. Corey Perry, Troy Terry, and 
Larson, Johan Larson to be exact, on the third line. And, well, honestly, that line should probably be better than it is. As far as the defense goes, we've got Matsumoto with Klingberg, sexy top pairing. Then we've got Colton Pareko with Mark Giordano on the second pairing. And then we have Slater Cuckoo and Sammy Vatanen on the third pairing. In goal, we've got Thatcher Demko along with Tristan Jari. And on the bench, we've got Justin Braun and Ethan Bear. Moving over to the AHL, we have almost an entire um, Tigers drafted team here. If you look through, literally every single player is drafted by the Hamilton Tigers except for Nick Benino. Everybody else, everybody else has been drafted by the Tigers and Coloma and Bjorkstrand, we are looking to move up into the team after this season. Same with Noel Gundler, not, yeah, Noel Gundler, sorry. And besides that, you never know how it's going to go. So looking forward to seeing how this team can perform. And then on the defensive end, we've got Sean Bengoa alongside Pavel Sergeyev. Again, all Hamilton drafted. Then we have Craig Pitt with Jaden Emery on the second pairing. Nice little group there. And then we have Lars Dahl. Seventh overall pick, man. Lars Dahl with uh, Ligurier. Here, I think that's how you say it, but honestly, I don't know. Jacob or Jacob Leguerrier there, drafted by the Canadians, and then in goal, this is where our star stands for the team in Tyler Parsons. I mean, obviously, a starting goalie down in the AHL would definitely serve some other teams better, but uh, Quincy Abitz are backing him up there, and uh, yeah, we just gotta fiddle with some jersey numbers now. But that is essentially it for this team it's looking really good bright future here at the team see i don't know about luke leopold having the c the only reason being that a guy like esteban slaney is probably going to surpass his skill level over the next couple of seasons as far as goudreau goes he should be wearing number 13 not 14 um and then yeah see we have a's on a couple of guys here that I'm not entirely sure I want to have it alternates yet. So I'm not going to give Klingberg an A. I'm actually going to give Matsumoto the C this season as we want somebody to lead us towards the playoffs. And then besides that, you know, he's been here for a year now. We're going to see how he does in a leadership role. Matt Duchesne is also going to get an alternate captain there. There was one more thing that I saw in here that didn't exactly pique my interest. So that number being um, Thatcher Demko wearing 36. I'm just going to give him 30 at this point. And uh, he should be good there. Because that's not looking good. But besides that, I think the team should be better than last year. I mean, who knows how it's going to go. Let's see how this draft class looks. Hey, we finally got a defenseman or two in here. Haven't had any real defense in the draft for a while. And by the looks of it, oh, well, we got a power forward right winger up there probably. So that would be a nice addition as well to the team. But you never know. You have to actually land picks. And that's something we have not been great at doing. So, you know, we could try to make a trade, maybe. I don't think that's the most wise option here. I think this team is in fairly good sorts for the most part. But, you know, it would be nice to possibly land somebody. You know, Goudreau is also a piece that, you know, we can possibly trade in a year. Honestly, I'm playing NHL more like it's NBA, <laughs> to be completely honest with the way I swap players in this franchise mode, but, you know, business is business, I guess, and, uh, yeah, this will be interesting to see. So, that is going to be wrapping it up for this episode. If you guys are enjoying this series so far, go down below, leave a like on the video, 
I'm going to show you guys quickly what our new franchise player looks like in Esteban Slaney. Um, 18 years old, playmaker, he's 5'10", and, well, he should be a beast in the future. Um, oh my gosh, look at that beard, guys. Look at that beard. <laughs> so, um, besides the CCM skates, I'm kind of feeling more like a warrior vibe on this guy as well. So let's go with, um, which ones look really good? The alphas look really good. They do. Like, you can't lie there. Okay. And then, because we're going with warrior, obviously we gotta go with the alpha QX, because that just matches it so well. And then the blade tape color has gotta be the yellow. Or not blade blade tape, yikes, no, not blade tape, uh, shaft tape, sorry. Has to be yellow to match the team. Because, you know, it's the Tigers, like, come on, there's no way you can't give him the yellow shaft tape with all the other yellow gear that we're giving him. And then, as far as skates go, I'm going to hand him some tacks instead of jet speeds, just so they match a little bit better. And that looks really good, man. Like, I like how that pattern looks, how Esteban Slaney looks here in general. And, you know, I mean, look at his appearance, guys. Like, look at this beard. Oh, that's actually sick. Current beard length is two. What's his playoff max? Yeah. Oh, buddy. He's going to look fabulous. Does he have gray hair? He has silver hair. Ha, <laughs> ha. What a guy. Oh, my gosh. He's, he looks like he's just super old, and he's 18. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. Like, actually, what a beauty. <laughs> Dang. Okay, I'm looking forward to using this guy. So we're not going to change the number or anything. Uh, let's give him a presentation, too, because, you know. <laughs> what do we go with? I'm kind of feeling the guitar solo, honestly. But... Kind of feeling the drag just because he's going to be smooth. He's going to be a playmaker. And when he scores, you know he's going to sell you hard. So, yeah, Esteban Slaney, newest addition to the team. Going to be awesome. The other guy that I never actually took a look into is Brian Steves here. Just want to see how he looks. And, uh, I mean, number eight there, he's rocking the Verberos. Yeah, eesh. Um,. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm kind of feeling like we hand him warrior stuff as well, just because the Verberos kind of, they don't look as great, I would say. Um, I don't care so much about the visor and stuff, it's more just trying to kind of match equipment up, rather than have him all over the place with what he's wearing and using. Give him like a CCM tax. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay. He looks better now. So, yeah, there's Brian Steves. He's number eight. And, uh, yeah, those are the newest additions to this team for the most part. I mean, we do have AHL players. I'm not going to get into depth with them until they actually make the team, being Robert Bjorkstrand and Toby Coloma. But, uh, is it Kiloma or Kiloma? I think it's Kiloma. But yeah, we got lots of players in here that are, you know, eventually going to work their way up into the team. I'm looking specifically at guys like Samsonov, um, Walt, Walton, Nylander, Gunler. Yeah, more wingers than anything, really, at this point. But, you know, a guy like uh, Johan Jakobsen has a chance to make the team. There's a lot of guys like that that could potentially make the team um, in a year or two. So that is going to be wrapping it up. If you guys are new to the channel, 
consider subscribing if you made it to the end of the video like please consider subscribing i release lots of content like this and well that's gonna be it for me this is etanios signing out see ya